So we live in a country in which we mainly observe the health problems of the developing world through news and documentaries. But what if I tell you that the UK is placed in the top 10 countries in the world facing a problem, the other nine being only developing countries? And this is called iodine insufficiency. Iodine is a nutrient we get from our diet and takes part in the formation of thyroid hormones. During pregnancy, the baby doesn't have a developed thyroid gland, so it only depends on the mother for the supply of thyroid hormones, which, which play a role on brain development. Iodine deficiency is the first preventable cause of brain damage in the world. In its most extreme form, it results in cretinism, but this is not what we see in the UK. What we see is the more subtle consequences. Children have lower IQ, poor learning ability and school performance. And this creates health inequalities and reduces the economic productivity and the potential of a whole community. For the World Health Organization and UNICEF, the elimination of iodine deficiency is a priority. But surprisingly, in the UK, there is still no prophylaxis. The iodine recommendations are the same since 1991, and there is no policy for supplementation or salt fortification. And here is where my PhD comes in. I've measured the iodine status of 700 pregnant women and their newborns, and I've confirmed that unfortunately, iodine insufficiency is a reality in Glasgow. So with this lack of prophylaxis, we need to find a way to address this public health concern for the benefit of our children. Iodine in the diet is mainly found in fish, seafood and dairy products. And including those foods in the diet in the required amounts could potentially provide the solution. So my questions are, can women make the right dietary choices in order to increase iodine intake? And what is the best way to advise them that they need this change? I've interviewed 50 women and I've observed their willingness to change their diet for the benefit of their baby's health. By conducting two UK-wide surveys on seafood and dairy products, I have also identified any barriers in the consumption of those foods so that I can find and propose ways to overcome them. My aim now is to explore how we could increase both awareness and iodine intake. Uh, these studies have informed the design of a pregnancy intervention which I'm now testing. If this succeeds, it will provide an easy and cost-effective way to address this very simple but worrying problem of iodine insufficiency in the UK. Will we be able to train women towards the right choices? I will have the answer to that question soon. Thank you.